Hey everybody, this is Felix from InventBox where the solution is right around the corner. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to set up a web server called Apache. Now, Apache is one of the most configurable, versatile web servers out there, and it's free and pretty simple to use once you understand what's happening. Some tutorials out there just tell you what to do, but I want to explain why and what's actually happening so that you can troubleshoot if and when something goes wrong. So for this, we're running on Linux, but the same steps should also apply for if you're running on a Mac. I'm just gonna open up a terminal and we're gonna install Apache. And we want Apache 2. Okay, Apache has finished installing. Now, let's first go create a very simple website so that we can just test everything out as we're building it to make sure it works properly. All of our websites are going to be in the var www and we'll just make a new folder for a new website call it squid actually it's called it squid yeah that's fine and in here we'll make a new document and I actually have an HTML template already but of course you can just create a blank document and we want to name that index.html. Index is the default name that is understood by Apache to be the home page. So if you only have one page, name it index. And then HTML is hypertext markup language. That's just what we use to build websites. If you're not familiar with it, then you can go check out the web development tutorials on InventBox. And we're just going to open this up with a text editor. Okay, so here's a blank HTML document. And if you don't understand what this is, just follow along for now and then go check out our web design tutorial. We'll just do a very simple website. Okay. There, save that, close it. We're pretty much done with that for now. All right, we've got a very simple website in the www folder which is where apache knows to look for websites and our squid website files are all in a folder named squid perfect next we're going to be doing a lot of sudo work so i'm going to just sudo s to get into root And we need to go to etc apache2 and in here we have a number of things here's the main configuration file for apache we don't actually need to touch that we are going to go create what's called a virtual host and these are in sites available now the, the two that we have right here are default sites, default virtual hosts. Virtual hosts are basically the, all of the configurations that tell Apache how to run a specific website. So because we're going to have our own 
new website that we're creating, we need to create a virtual host to tell Apache how to run it. That's going to go right here in the sites available. Let's copy the current default and call it squid.conf. Now we need to edit that. And of course you need pseudo privileges for this. And let's just clear out all of this, d10, d, d10, d, and what, d70, got it. Okay, so in the virtual host, we have it set up, this asterisk means any domain, and this 80 means port 80. Now the internet, is able to talk to computers on different ports, we call them. It's kind of like a different lane of traffic, except it's a number. And websites, by convention, run on port 80. We need to define a few things, such as what website they're asking for, and we can do that with server name. This is just going to be the name of the website that you are going to be hosting. And then we need to specify. This is actually optional, but if you have an alternate name that you want to use, such as www.squid.com, you can do that here. Then we have to define document root. Document root is basically just the folder or the root of your website where your files are. In our case, they're in var www squid. So we just put that var www squid. Next, we need to tell it the permissions or what and who is allowed to access what files. We specify the directory var www squid because we're talking about the same one. This time we just put a slash after it. And okay. First, we need to give it some options. Don't worry too much about these. Just type them. They're pretty standard. Indexes includes follow sim links and multi views. Again, pretty standard for Apache virtual hosts. Don't worry too much about those. Now we need an allow override all. That's also pretty standard. And then this next line is one of the most important in this file. This is going to be require. And depending on what you type here, tells Apache who is allowed to access the files in var www squid, which is your website. For now, I'm just going to put local. That will only allow my computer to see these files, which is what I want until the website is good and ready to deploy. And that is all we need for the virtual host. So we will save that. And now that we have a virtual host in the sites available, we need to move it to this sites enabled folder. And we do that with the A2 N site, Apache 2 enable site. And we'll give it our squid.conf. Do that. It gives us a little friendly reminder 
you're going to have to reload Apache in order for this to take effect. So we'll do that. Okay. Apache has been reloaded. Now let's open a browser and try to navigate to our site and see what happens. Squid.com. This is not the website that we just set up. What is this? Well, this is the actual squid.com. Well, that is annoying because we were trying to have squid.com, but we can actually trick our computer into taking us from, from this website to our website. And we can do that, if you remember, all of the website names, like squid.com, your computer doesn't know what they mean. So it'll go ask somebody what the address of the website is. That means that if we can set something up that has a fake address, we can kind of hijack squid.com. On Linux, this file is located in the etc hosts file. Now in here, you see it looks very similar to the information on a name server. We have some addresses and we have some website names. What we can do is tell it to point to our computer and just for reference this 127 any ip address with 127 in the front stands for your computer our computer's address and if we type squid.com here and save that watch what happens when we reload this page look at that it took us to our website. Now, just to be clear, I did not actually steal squid.com from whoever owns it. This only applies on my computer, and I was using this as an example. But it is kind of funny that you can do this, and if you got onto your friend's computer, you could actually change youtube.com in their host's file to your website so every time they try to go to YouTube it'll just go to your website. Maybe that's kind of mean, but it would sure be funny. The last thing that we need to do so in the next because tutorial, honestly, I think this website is whenever good enough for the live we web, get I don't know about you. A real we need domain, to make this real website public instead of so squid.com my example. Any computer that comes then into our website we will can see link it. that that means Yep. to you guessed the it, real name servers, not just a dummy host. one, so that everybody so can we'll open this come guy to our web server and to get our web page, require local, when they type in, we'll say require domain. all granted. That will allow everyone access to this squid folder, which is where our website lives. And anytime you change the configurations, you need to reload Apache. Now, we should be able to access this from any other device on my network. Before we can do that, we need to know what this computer, which is the web server, what its IP address is. So to get that, we can type ifconfig, and it is this right here. You're probably starting to recognize these numbers by now. So I'm going to head over to Darius's computer and we're going to see if we can access this website. All right, we are on Darius's computer, which is on the same Wi-Fi network as mine. So we should be able to type in its IP address. That's the IP address of our web server. And sure enough, we get a page. It is not the one we were expecting, but that's actually okay because the one we were expecting 
we specifically said it is for squid.com. Now, I already went in and changed Darius's ETC hosts file so we can just type squid.com here to bypass the real one. And sure enough, our website shows up. So now people outside of our web server can access the website. And in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at getting a real website domain for free and how to link your domain to your web server's IP address.